Are you using zooming and panning in your video editing? Did you know that by using zooming and panning where appropriate can greatly enhance your content quality and your viewers experience? Well, right now I'm going to show you how to use zooming and panning tools inside Camtasia and do it the right way and not have people get distracted and wondering what the heck's going on. Let's dive in, or should I say zoom in? Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great video, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. Okay, so we're going to start our tutorial off today by looking at a screencast example that I did of, of uh, doing entry for an online application to make a restaurant reservation. Let's just play it and see how it goes. So you see we start out and then we zoom in and now we're keying in some data, can read it nicely, then we go to the search results and it's also zoomed in at a nice level for reading and you can see our selection shows up nicely and then we're zooming in again now to enter our location and now we go on to actually booking a time zoomed in and easy to see the choices and then we finally have to enter our text information it has a nice fluid flow and um, we want to achieve that in our results so let's dive in and now look at the tips as a first step I went through the whole file knowing where that I wanted to do my zooms and pans and you can see those by these animations that are all here uh, set up through the through the uh, zoom and pan which is the tool right up here inside animations zoom and pan and I applied all of those before I did anything else because that made it easier for when I got to the point of splitting files to do other elements which you're going to see that happen now so remember go through the raw file first and determine where you want to zoom and pan and, and take care of all of that first now back to the first part here as you can see we come in slowly and then all of a sudden we do a zoom in now that zoom is achieved by by just you know grabbing the handlebars here in this area where you see zoom and pan and just by changing them you can change the positions of where the zoom goes to so here's the end point so as you can see the zoom focus on the left here is, is much closer in and to, to, to normally add that all we're doing is just literally when we change the, the, the position of the zoom pan window it, it automatically applies it and as you can see down here on the on the timeline that that red point started to bubble up and bubble down it's re representing that changes are going on so I'm just going to undo the changes that we just did there because I want to keep it where we had it at okay there we go we're back to where we were with our normal zoom so it's as simple as that so I if I wanted to I could you know just as easily do another zoom right here just position the playhead where you want it to go and as soon as you start to adjust things you can see it automatically added uh, another animation that's all we did here so I'm not going to keep this extra one and as you can see each animation that gets added when you do a zoom has a certain duration and length so as you can see when we play it here how how that sort of had a nice smooth flow if I wanted to speed up the animation I would tighten it up shorten the tail or the tip and if you see that now that's much faster but that's not what I want so again I'm going to undo it and leave it as what we had then moving forward you can see that I had a split here the reason why I had a split here is because I was getting into the text entry phase that first stage and because text entry was slow and takes time I don't want the user experience to be slowed up so I actually added a clip speed and the, the clip speed can be done you know just by doing your right mouse button add clip speed but we already have it in here and adjusted you would just pull the handles forward or back you know in this case we slide left to shorten it and I've already attuned that and as you can see we have a clip speed of 1.94 times so with the clip speed now that gets the text in quickly and that's why I had to cut uh, split this section was so that the clip speed would only be applied to that now we continue forward and you see the clip speed is, is no longer a factor because we finished the text but now after the person pressed entry on the 
the Google search input, we get back search results. So what I did this time was a pan. You can see now if I go to the end position of this animation in the, in the, in the zoom and pan uh, work area here, you can see that the, the, the rectangle is in the top left corner. If I go to the beginning of it, it's in the position that it was where we did our zoom in originally. And again, I'll go to the end. So see that? So we've actually, in that cycle, we're, we're, zoom, we're, we're panning over to that position. And when that pan is executed, we are now moving forward. And then you see there's our search result. And by panning over and keeping it zoomed like that, you can see that we have a lot of the text filling up most of the screen, not the big white space that was there in the original. So again, the pan is very easy to achieve. I could do a pan anytime if I wanted to add one here, just move the playhead to where I want to go and I can slide the box and it'll, it'll move it. As you can see the red bubble showing down below where the keyframe is. And if I wanted to zoom it at the same time, I could change the zoom, you know, and move it around to where I want. And then that would be the uh, pen, but we don't want it. So we're going to delete it and just continue on with what we have. Okay, now on to part two. Okay, so here we are coming into part two. As I already said, we did the pan over to get to the point where we were going to have the display of the, the options on the search come out. And now as we scroll down, you can see the scroll has started, but then look, I hit a split. And the reason I introduced a split here was because the speed of the scroll was too slow. And I didn't want that to be awkward for the user. So we added a clip speed in here, as you can see. And the clip speed has to be in, in both, both, both clips. So as you can see, it's in both the screen class um, um, camera piece as well as the visual piece. So they're both there. But um, my camera face is not on screen, so you don't see that part. We just have it there. Then as we continue, uh, now we go into a zoom in. And if you see in the top left corner at the beginning, um, top left corner here in the zoom and pan, we have the rectangle there in the top. And then at the end of the keyframe here, we did a pan to move down. In other words, to zoom in, zoom in a bit. So we actually change the size of the zoom, which is like a pan as well as zoom in. So both were done. It's considered a pan and zoom when you're changing the, the, the uh, size of the rectangle here and you're zooming in. So as you can see nicely now, we have our choice selection on screen. And as we scan a little further, we added a sketch motion draw box, which is an annotation. So if you win here under annotations, here are the sketch motion draw boxes. And we just used this one here and brought it down to our timeline. That's what's up here. And the sketch motion draws. And after, after it draws, then you see we had, um, what we did is while the search result was returning, we went back to go to our, our full screen size. So I'm going to go back to animations and we're going to see that you see the end result is I just did a scale to fit and what the scale to fit does is actually just take from wherever you are here and then when it, when you get to the end you see it filled up and that's as simple as just you know I'll move the playhead here to show you as an example uh, put it beforehand so it was small we're right here on the timeline and I clicked scale to fit so you see it raised it it was that simple and it added the animation here but if you're accidentally off of the keyframe and you start playing with the zoom you're going to automatically be adding more animations. So you need to be careful to be sure that you aren't intending to add that. And you may want to, if you have a multi move zoom or zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want to do or pan, it's all up to you, but just be conscious of that, that when you're on the beginning end keyframes, you're, you're, um, continue, you're managing that particular animation. So there you have it. And here's one more final spin of the finished product. And I want you to know another major benefit of what we did not was that we cut our total length down from 47 seconds down to 35, a full 12 seconds off and made the experience more pleasurable. So as you can see, using zooming and panning the right way can have a profound impact on the end product. Now we're going to take a look at a bonus example, which is one of based on footage, not on a screencast. So you can actually use your zoom in and out 
pan feature on footage as well. So first let's play the clip, the raw clip by itself. As you can see, it's the horses running on the sand. It's a nice aerial shot following them as they, they increase their speed along the, the nice sand there. And now we're going to go into the next clip, which is the same clip, but just done a little differently. But before I go into that, I just want to show you that uh, the actual that we've actually taken the clip and expanded its scale to start. And it actually doesn't physically appear as an animation on the canvas, yet it, the, the rectangle is zoomed in because we've done that scaling already uh, with the uh, footage. But now we're going to go back out and let's uh, see a little more clearly. So when we run it, you're going to see here, we're now going to have a zoom and we're going to start from a zoomed in position and then zoom zoom out. Watch. So as they start to pick up, pick up speed, I introduced the zoom and it has a nice, you know, quickening to it. And it happened over a nice duration. And as you can see at the end here, if you go to the, to the end keyframe and then you click the right mouse button over, there's something here called enable easing. I use the option called exponential in out instead of auto. And that in theory is supposed to help give a sort of like a, uh, a little accelerated, um, acceleration to the zoom as you go and that was for effect you need to experiment with those options to see what you want in as an end result in the third example i work with the same level of scaling of the footage to start but you can see that i have a zoom here it's a little shorter and because it's shorter it'll be a little more dramatic and for the easing i left it as auto but just watch how different the effect is here we go there you see they're trotting at the same zoom in and now quickly it goes to the finished zoom point for the rest of the clip. So there you have it. You can see that you can now apply your zooming effects to footage, screencasts. There's lots of options. Have fun playing. Wow. Using zooming and panning are great techniques to enhance your videos and improve your viewers experience. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check out several other Camtasia editing tutorials in my Camtasia playlist. You can find the link in the YouTube card above or in the video description below. If you're into video editing and creating videos and you want to learn more tips on how to succeed with video, video marketing, and YouTube, then be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page. I'll see you in the next video.